I'm here with Stefan Etter, uh, who is the man behind uh, I IEEE, -E, uh, and he's a guy that actually makes these uh, drive-by-wire conversion kits for the RB26, um, which is actually a bit of a masterpiece to actually look at. There's a ton of componentry here, which we're going to rig up right now to put onto the RB28 engine. Um, Stefan approached me uh, online um, a couple of months ago uh, regarding um, drive-by-wire and, and, and sort of asked, you know, would you like to get involved with, with sort of our program? And I said, yes, I would, because I, at, that, at that time I was kind of looking at drive-by-wire um, as an option for um, sort of saving or sort of softening the blow of the rev limiter at high RPM. So um, we're going to rev this new engine to, you know, close to 10,000 RPM. And the last thing I want to be doing is on the rev limiter. So this kit is just one of the many features that um, is going to enable us to do that. But I guess um, going back to the start, um, do you want to tell us about you know how you came up with this this whole kit and yeah, um, sure. like you know what why this because it's so it's so intricate and so unique but it's it's so cool. <coughs> uh, yeah, so basically, uh, I was in Switzerland for three and a half years working in a shop where we had done a lot of GDR engines, we've done a lot of rebuilds, um, and taking the intake and the turbo side apart is always a bit of a it's a long process, there's a lot of hoses, pipes, uh, wiring, gaskets, and it's... I wanted to make a system or just a conversion kit which would retain all the ITBs but simplify it a lot uh, and save having to reassemble all those OEM components, all the pipes and assembling it takes about, you know, if, if you've got everything laid out ready to fit in to the onto the engine it takes about maybe an hour to put together so what are, so what like f so for me personally um, some of the benefits I'm looking for as I spoke to just about before was um, the ability for us to use the throttles as kind of like the rev limiter um, what other benefits can people get from going to drive by wire and that's just one of the few like what's what other things are you sort of seeing so um, I mean, for some guys, some guys are looking at cruise control. Um, you know, for guys in the States maybe, or Germany, they got nice long autobahns and highways where maybe you want that, that luxury, I suppose. It's anti-lag, um, and then just being able to safeguard the, the engine mainly as well. Uh, the ECU can just take over if something's not right and, and close the throttles or limit it. Um, yeah, just just all those nice features that really comes with drive by wire. Yep. Yep. What about like um, response time and uh, you know compared to a cable compared to the, the drive by wire? What would you say yep. to, say to that? Uh, so, unfortunately, we haven't done any back to back cable versus drive by wire with you know being on the dyno with a GDR with the cable system and then swapping straight over to the drive by wire. Unfortunately, but. Uh, at some point we want to get to that. We know there's already been a big increase in response and it feels really good. Um, yeah, that's, that's all I can really say about the, the response part of it at the moment, but we'll definitely be working on that in future yep. and we'll want to get a um, a back-to-back -back video going at some point yeah yeah so I mean that's something I'll be able to test um, as well like on the yep. RB28 I mean with the drifting and um, you know with the I, mean, I guess I'm pretty in tune with how things were particularly with the old turbos EFR 9180s and stuff which you know throttle response to to roll on that transient curve was quite important yeah um, but yeah in my small amount of research like yeah I, I think um, the latency of these, you know, is is as good, um, if not better. Assuming, you know, it could be. This is probably better if you get a sloppy cable, for example, than a yeah. than a cable. You know, so I think this is going to be really interesting to test on on, on my car. Um, yeah. In terms of the like this intake manifold here. So what have you actually done to this RB26 intake manifold uh, right here? Because this looks yes. This is a factory so, one, but it looks looks um, really awesome. Basically, what we've done is we've we went with an exchange with Zach, uh, we prepared an intake manifold for him and we basically shaved off the original mounting points for the, the linkage bridge which goes there, which a cable usually goes to, um, because it's not needed anymore, so we basically did, shaved it off and then we went and um, 
basically replicated the cast look as, w as well as we could and then had it vapor blasted um, and yeah, it just gives it a real nice finish you can barely tell that there's a difference from you know the OEM setup if you yeah it, it just it looks really factory basically once it's assembled again yeah it totally does it looks amazing to be honest and what about so these start like these are st these studs are not factory yeah so that's get, um this is a titanium stud kit that we do for rb26 uh which just replaces the the oem steel studs it's just uh, looks a bit nicer and one of the benefits of these is as well um, with a Nismo intake manifold you can use these studs and you can install the Nismo intake in the car without having to take the brake booster out yeah. uh, which is what the biggest benefit sort of of them but yeah. yeah and what about um, so the throttle bodies on my car we're still using like you spoke about before the back-to-back -back, we're still using the uh, factory 45 mil butterfly I think can you do anything more with the butterflies on the yeah, so basically, like you say, yeah, at the moment we're just going to keep these on, on your car. Um, and in future, we're going to potentially step it up to 48 millimeters, which is uh, an overhaul, uh, which we do, service, which we do, um, where we take the, the bores up to 48 millimeters and then increase the throttle blade size accordingly, obviously, too. Um, and then we also even do a modified throttle shaft, uh, which basically just adds to the, the performance increase in the throttle bodies uh, once you step it up to 48. Yep. Um, and we're seeing around about a 27% increase in efficiency of those throttle bodies, which is really awesome. Yep. Again, it's, um, yeah, depending on power levels you're shooting for, it's uh, whether it's necessary or not. Um, yeah. But we'll be also doing some back-to-back -back videos on those at some point and yep. um, getting some hard data on it. So yeah, looking forward to that too. And what about the motor? What motor do you run for the, um, the actual motor for the throttle to open? So that is a BMW throttle motor. Uh, they're the best out. There's no other manufacturer really makes a part like this, which is why we went with it mainly. And just the durability and longevity of these motors is just amazing. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much that. Yep, oh, sweet, that sounds good. Okay, sweet. So, um, so obviously this kit's going to be um, set up on my car, which is actually just sitting over there in the corner, um, getting wired up for the kit right now. Um, it will be used on the billet block, obviously, um, with a bigger turbo. Um, we're going to try push over a thousand horsepower on this setup, um, and it will be used pretty heavily in drifting. So, I'm personally really excited to um, to see how it goes. Um, I think that. You know, I think there's some serious benefits we can get out of this kit for the car, particularly in for reliability, which is really what I'm looking at. I just don't want to be sitting on a limit at nine and a half thousand RPM. I'm hoping this kit will just give us the control we need to sort of soften the blow, essentially, and increase yeah. that reliability. Maybe even anti lag as well. Um, you know, there's there's a whole new world of things we can now do on this with this setup that we couldn't do before with the cable. So, um, yeah, we'll get this on the car and um, we'll, we'll we'll go through it a bit more. Cool. Okay, so it's a couple of weeks later. The engine's been actually fully assembled. And the drive-by-wire kit is hooked up and running. So you can see it just really has given us so much more space on the side of the engine bay. And it looks awesome. The wiring on this car is done by a guy called Valdi PRS. So we've just tapped into um, the loom and got this up and running. We're running it on the Haltech 2500 uh, Elite ECU. And obviously down here we've got the pedal box which has been plugged into the ECU. So we've got an APS, an accelerator position sensor. On the back of the six throttle bodies down there somewhere is a TPS position sensor and that all feeds back to the ECU which then drives the uh, drive-by-wire motor. Um, I think 
in terms of latency, so just to give people an um, overview of, you know, is there any lag between this accelerator pedal and um, and that Versa cable? Um, I've got a GoPro here, so I'm just going to set the GoPro up somewhere here, and I'm just going to record my feet and the throttle at the same time, just to just to show. So I'm just going to go through the range of motion with my foot. Hopefully, the GoPro and the engine bay is going to pick this up. Um, Full throttle, half throttle. Seems to work. I've got the laptop plugged in. So I got I'm plugged into my Haltech ECU. We can see that accelerator pedal up the top I believe so my foot's fully open at the moment if I close take my foot off the accelerator it goes to zero we can also see the drive by wire TPS which will be on the actual throttle bodies themselves so they should sort of match uh, what my accelerator pedal is doing so they, they pretty much are so we have full throttle they will then kind of percent of each other by the way this hasn't been dynoed yet so this is just set up to work on my car here um, so yeah driver wire TPS oh, there's two outputs for that okay yeah that's the voltage and the motor duty so uh, what I have noticed with the DVW motor duty is when I um, put my foot on the you know open the throttle or whatever it seems to go higher momentarily then sort of drops off a bit I assume that's the load or the output that the drive-by uh, drive wire motor is doing. Not 100% sure, but either way, it works to my liking. It seems to work nicely. Um, I have been playing around with the idle stuff on this as well. I've got it to idle. I'll fire it up now with the drive-by wire idling, if the battery will let me. Check for oil pressure. to be tuned however you can see that it definitely works so um, to be honest I'm pretty pumped about this um, let's turn that off yeah all in all it's, it's good to go good to go to dyno pretty satisfied and pretty amazed at the quality of Stefan's work on this kit it is well thought out everything just seems to work so Let's see how this thing goes on the dyno and then on the track.